3.3, differentiating inverse functions. Alrighty, to create the inverse function, you switch x and y values and solve for y. So if you have f of a equals b, then the inverse would be f of b equals a because you switched x and y. Do you see how y and x got switched? That's basically the idea. You're switching x and y. Now, if f is a one-to-one -one differentiable function, don't worry about one-to-one -one means. I'm not going to really go into that. Just it, it probably shouldn't pop up as something that's important. Um, it's an inverse function. This is a sign for inverse function of f. It's also differentiable. And um, f prime, the inverse derivative, is equal to this, provided the denominator is not a zero because you can't divide by zero. So this basically, all that phrase is saying is if you have a function f, and the inverse is this. The derivative of the inverse is this, which is the derivative of the 1 over the derivative of the inverse inside. It's like a composite function idea. And, and this actually will show later in some other situations where this comes from, but this is something you're going to want to memorize. Okay, you just got to know this, and it's, once you know this simple idea and just, just use it, you're done. We're not going to go too deep with this. Um, and yeah, you just got to memorize this and use it. So let's look at the problem. Let f be a function defined by this. If g is equal to the inverse, okay, so this is saying g is the inverse, so it's like what the inverse of this is g, for all values x, then the point 3, 6 is on the graph of f. So if you think about it, if I plug in 3, do you get 6 out? If you plug in 3, do you get 6 out? So they gave us a coordinate. They could have said, figure that out yourself, but they actually gave it to us. Kind of nice. You could have plugged it in. What are the values of g prime 6? So g prime 6, g is the inverse. So it's basically saying, what is the sorry derivative of the inverse plug in 6? I said that earlier wrong. It's g prime 6, which is the inverse of f derivative at 6, or slope at 6. So technically, here is the long way of doing it. The long way of doing it would be, could you switch x and y? Could you put an x there and y's here? Take an implicit derivative. Got it? Could you then plug in 6? But it wouldn't be 6. It's a little tricky. Yeah, so anywho, it would actually be 3 you're plugging in. <laughs> so, but we're not going to do that way. We're going to use this formula. And, and here's how this the formula that we have up there simply works. So we know in this situation that we want the inverse of g. And in this situation, isn't the inverse, um, sorry, the inverse of f, and isn't the inverse of g. So we're going to call it g this time. And we want the derivative of g. Okay, we'll plug in um, 6 in a second. So the derivative of g is going to be 1 over the derivative of g of x. If you just think about that, isn't f in this situation, isn't f prime, or sorry, the inverse, I always think, I mess up saying it, this is inverse, isn't the inverse g. So can't we put a, a g here and a g here instead of the inverse of f? Now we, what we simply do is they want a 6. So can we plug in 6 now? So can we simply do this? Okay, 6 here, 1 over f prime g of 6. All right, so what is this equal to? What is g of 6? Well, g of 6 means the inverse of f at 6. So if we talked about this earlier, if you look back to this statement right here, don't we just switch these two? So isn't the inverse, isn't g of 6 really 3? Because if you plug in 6, you get 3 out on an inverse. Their xy's are flip-flopped. So what this is really saying is f prime of 3. Because the inverse, g of 6, is 3. Because you plug in 6, you get 3. Its inverses are flip-flopped. So now we just want the derivative at 3. So can we go up here and take the derivative? Can we go up here and take the derivative, which is going to be, okay, um, we'll come to that, the derivative. So f prime x is going to be 2x minus 1. So can't we go 2 times blank minus 1, and can't we plug our 3 in? When we do that, don't get 1 over 5. So the slope of the derivative at 6 is 1 over 5. Again, we could have just switched x and y, take the derivative of that, and plug in 3, not 6, and that would do it. All right, here's our formula again. This is the key formula. Um, let f and g be functions that are differentiable everywhere. So both are differentiable everywhere. 
F is the inverse function of, sorry, G is the inverse function of F. And if G of 5 equals 4, and F prime e of 4 equals 7, then the derivative of G at 5 is what? Well, let's not freak out too much. We don't even have functions here, but if we go to this formula again, let's look at that formula. All right, now we've got to think again that F and G are inverses. So the inverse of F is G. So this is going to be G prime again, just like the kind of last problem. So this is going to be G prime X is equal to 1 over F derivative of G of X. It's back to that because G is the inverse of F. So we can, inverse of F is G. So we're going to make those Gs. All right, now we want G of 5, so let's put a 5 in there. So that's going to be G prime of 5 is going to be 1 over F prime of G of 5. Now we got to look. Okay, do we know G of 5? Yeah, we do. It's right there. Isn't G of 5 4? So that's actually, actually kind of nice. They gave us what we needed. So isn't that 4? Okay. And, okay, do you know F prime 4? Yeah, it's right there. 7. So isn't this seem a little too easy? It is. You're done. If you use this formula, it's actually fairly easy. Now, real quick, if they would have said f of 4 is 5, you could have still figured out this. If it said f of 4 is 5, this is really f of 4 is 5 because the inverses flip x and y. f of 4 is 5. But they gave you the easy one. Kind of nice of them. All right, the table below gives selected values for a differentiable and decreasing function f and its derivative. So we have f, we have the derivative of f. So f of 0 is 12, or f prime 1 is negative 1. All right, um, so if, f, if the inverse of f is the inverse function of f, okay, what is the value of this? Well, according to the function up here, we're not going to nick g's this time. This one doesn't do a g. We just leave it. So let's rewrite it. This is saying that I always hate writing the derivative. The derivative is creepy. When you're um, writing these, it, it's kind of annoying. Oh, actually, let me put the 3 in right now. Actually, I'll leave blanks. Let me leave blanks for now. 1 over f prime of f negative 1. Okay. And what number are we plugging in? Are we plugging in 3 here? All right, so if we look at this first, what's the inverse at 3? Well, what this is saying is, doesn't x and y flip-flop? So which of these has an output of 3? Can you see an output of 3 here? Wouldn't the inverse of f at 3 be 2? If you switch x and y, that's where it gets people confused. But this is really saying 1 over f prime 2, because the output of 3 would come from 2. So if you flip, you're kind of going backwards. So this is 2. Now, can you simply find f prime 2? Isn't f prime 2 right here? f prime 2 is negative 5. So my answer here is simply going to be 1 over negative 5, which you could also write that as negative 1 fifth. We're done. Simple as that.